You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. This is episode 106. My name is Clark from 5 Card Guys on Instagram and 5cardguys.com. And with me as usual is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards and John who is Trade You at Recess on Instagram. And today as we promised, we're looking to have more guests on the show this year and we have one for you today. In fact, he's been on the show before and he's a good friend of ours. His name is William Chong who owns an LCS here in Toronto called Dolly's Toys and Games. So as we start a new year, we thought it would be great to have William as a store owner and a retailer, what he thinks about the hobby for 2023, and just what he expects business to be like with all the economic uncertainty still looming over us. But before we get to our interview with Will, off the top guys, we've been talking about the hype that Victor Wembanyama would bring to the hobby when his rookie card comes out. Well, I'm not sure if this counts, but there is a card featuring Wemby in the January and February edition of the Sports Illustrated for Kids. It's one of those cards you have to rip along the perforated edges to get the card. Uh, So my question is, do you think this is the beginning of the Wembanyama hype or is this just a gimmick or frankly just a really smart marketing move by Sports Illustrated? Oh, man, this one's tough. I think it's a bit of all three. Sure. (laughs) I think uh, you worry about overprinting, obviously. That's going to be an issue. And how relevant is it going to be? Like, But Sports Illustrated has had like a very um, deep history, I'd say, in iconic Mm -hmm. cards. Um, Probably the biggest would be, I'm guessing, Tiger Woods. Tiger? Tiger Woods, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, having kind of like that as your staple, but... Things were very different back then too, right? This right. was like a 1996 SI, and then Tiger Woods rookie comes out, you know, in 2001. So mm-hmm. it was a, uh, it was kind of like no one knew that Sports Illustrated for kids were going to be that valuable until it actually True. was, and it could have been just that Tiger moment that made it that value, uh, valuable at least, right? So, um, but with that said, what did what what does it run? <laughs> what does it cost? I saw last sold for thirty bucks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, thirty bucks is you know you just put thirty bucks sure, away, sure, you know, and <laughs> yeah. keep it in like as never know you great never condition know. as possible. Like maybe even un <laughs> untouched. Just maybe stack a few of those mm, yeah. uh, uncut Sports Illustrated magazines and kind of just you know save what, it and see where it goes. You know what's funny? Like I saw some of the sold listings already, and like some of them are really terribly off-centered so if right. you're going to pick up a magazine of sports to look look for the centering oh you know so you, look, could tell, you, could, you could you could you could actually tell um uh i guess the cut can you tell on like ebay or anything do they post pictures or yeah yeah oh, i mean do. that's yeah. that's how i could tell that it's yeah. really off-centered yeah oh, i so. thought you could only tell in person or or something like that where you'd have to just purchase kind of like the magazine oh, the magazine are, so are, are they reselling the magazine like what's going on here so is it a release of like, i saw some kids? just kind of selling the sheet itself right. of like those nine cards I, i'm assuming um but then i've also seen them like yeah people ripping it along the edges and putting in a top loader like you would any normal card right right so i i don't know well what, what would you guys do would you just keep it in the mag or uh, yeah, Good I would question. keep it in the mag because by the time I rip it, technology would be able to rip that thing perfectly without being. Hey, you know what? That that said, I I heard like people that cut it with scissors, it's it de- devalues the card. Hundred percent, and that right? that also well, so that count is trimmed. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, where t- Tiger Woods cards were notorious for uh, was this whole trimming scandal, right? It was on that Sports Illustrated uh, for kids. And the ones that really are in high demand are the ones that have the sharp perforated edges, right? So as opposed to like kind of like it's it, there's none. Some cards I see. I I don't know. what what. Okay, I'll give you a situation. Mm-hmm. Back in the day before the whole boom. I actually bought a PSA nine version of the Sports Illustrated Kids for, <laughs> right. for eighteen hundred bucks. 
How much? Okay. 18? It was like 1800 bucks. So okay. dirt cheap. I don't know what it's now. I don't even want to know. But uh, <laughs> PSA 9 was a pretty pretty sure. decent grade for that. But um, my buddy on, on the message boards, on the forums, basically said, hey, that card is like known to be trimmed. And my heart kind of sank. And right. I started like questioning everything. And I read into it and stuff like that. And it was... I think it was on blowout forums. There was some information on it, and I ended up canceling that transaction because I was I was actually scared of kind of like what what if I because this was before the boom. I'm like I can't really sell this. My moral compass is like you know I know right. that this card sure, is sure. like altered. I'm not gonna pass it off as you know legit. So I was under kind of that influence at that time, and I regret not buying it just because I would just keep it in my collection. You know what I mean? Because uh, a, a PSA nine still is a PSA nine in, uh, slab. Whether it has that backstory, I think o- over time it would, you know, still hold enormous value. I don't like. What do you know the values of it? Or I'm just looking at it now. PSA nine last sold in January of this year, so recently for twenty five hundred. Oh, so not not too bad. Mm, so yeah. it, it went it, it went down a lot. It peaked like, uh, February 2021 uh, during the hobby hype um, at 9,975. Right. Yeah. Damn. I feel like it has That's a lot crazy. more to come down. Uh, population count 197 for PSA 9. PSA 10, population 23. Last one sold February of last year for 45,600. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's crazy. So we might have a Wemby uh, PSA ten. There might be <laughs> a thousand though. I, I don't get how you. I don't. I, I don't get how you judge PSA tens from nines with perforated I know. edges. It makes zero <clears throat> sense to me. Well, PSA graders. That's the answer. <laughs> they have all the answers. You know, if they, they, just, if they feel good that day. Yeah. PSA ten. Yeah. So <laughs> they they have they have that power, right? So yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, John, what would you do? I would sell it all, man. If you had it, I think. I mean, you paper had thirty bucks, though. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> thirty thirty bucks. <laughs> He's selling. Well, you're bulk. buying the magazine for what, like four ninety nine or something? That's okay. No, that's probably, a, that's a pretty good. That's now. a pretty good X. Inflation, it's probably like fifteen twenty bucks at least. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think. That, yeah. I I don't know. I I've, SI to me is kind of like the Jordan promo card. I actually, okay. I, it's actually way worse. Like the SI is not even a card; it's a page, because mm-hmm. I, I think I remember somebody saying like Sports Illustrated, uh, it can't officially be no, like a quote unquote card unless it's licensed, mm-hmm. right? And because Sports Illustrated doesn't have licensing, they have to make it a page, and people can oh, choose to cut it out. Right, right. That's so genius. So technically, uh, it's not. Yeah. Technically, it's not a card. <laughs> But um, people right. cut it out and then and then obviously call it a card. Um, I don't know. I think there's like a lot of the Tiger Woods certainly propped up uh, SI and put it into the forefront. Other than the Tiger Woods, because it's just become like a hobby thing with Tiger Woods. I don't know. Like I don't think the SI for kids. I could be completely wrong. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything to this. So if I had it or I bought the magazines, I would probably quickly look to to flip it. And I'm sure, I'm not saying it's going to be worth nothing. Like if a, a Wembenyama PSA 10 did pop up and it's like a pop one and it's impossible to get these, somebody out there is going to pay something for that. So I get I get that part. But for sure. the most part, I think um, it's not going to have that luster. I think it's it only sticks with the Tiger Woods. So Does Le- LeBron have one, Clark? Do you know? Ooh, uh, I don't I, know. I don't think so because no. I feel like I would have known about it. If it Somebody if who did. else has one? Like, uh, isn't there like um, there might be a, like a tennis? Maybe there might be a Serena, Serena. Williams. I think Serena Williams yeah. had one. Oh, you um, know what? Uh, LeBron does have one. Two thousand three SI for kids. And how do you know how that sell? Do you have that information in front of you? Or I do. You a PSA that? ten sold for eight hundred dollars. Right there, you go. So thirty yeah. bucks to eight hundred. Hey, there's some possibility, right? Yeah. If if if, <laughs> if, if one be the next LeBron. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. that's what He's they're the anticipating, yeah. right? Tiger was yeah. Tiger was a bit more special because, like, his rookie card, quote unquote, was right. two thousand one, which was there's nothing. There's already like a decade that, past yeah. when he already entered the PGA or whatever the years was. So yeah. there was just nothing out there that was really a rookie card. So people were kind of searching for something 
a lot more previous. And the only thing that was the, the most dated was this, the Sport Illustrated card, um, quote unquote card, right? So there's just there there's special the, um, circumstances around the Tiger Woods. Sure. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. There is the Serena Williams PSA 10, 1999 SI for kids. Um, sold for thirty two thousand four hundred. Wow. Oh yeah, so there is that's right. There is top count that eight though. One. Eight. What what year eight. was that? Nineteen ninety nine. So that was two years before her net pro, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe there's a pattern so there. There may be a correlation <laughs> between that, right? Because um, Wemby will get his Wemby will get it within the year though of this SI for kids, right? Right. Like, and then there's be... going to be a million cards. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you, John. I don't think there's going to be much value in it. Like, you know, I don't think you could make a strong correlation between, you know, Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, even LeBron. Um, but that being said, I'm going to buy a few magazines and just stash it. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Come on. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Just Ten bucks. I don't edition? think it's something that you're, you get excited off of. Sure. I would like to have a copy just of that magazine. I think it'd be a cool copy to have just because, you know, as a um, hobbyist? Yeah, yeah Victor sure. Wembanyama is like the biggest thing right now in basketball in the, the weak rookie class last year. So it's going to mm-hmm. build a lot of hype in my opinion. So it's like I'm all for anything that, you know, helps helps the hobby grow in like uh, an excited fashion. It's, yeah. And it's apparently generational talent. Like he's the real deal, man. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We'll see what happens. Um in a, in a few years but i you know i think um like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up a couple just in case um, <laughs> just in case all right let's go now to our interview with william chong so today on the pod as we mentioned off the top of the show we have our good friend william chong owner of dolly's toys and games And if you're a collector in the GTA, you probably know Will already because he's been around the hobby for a while. He's well connected and he's definitely a staple at local card shows. You'll see him there all the time. So welcome back, Will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah, glad to have you back. Before we get your thoughts on what you're expecting for the hobby in 2023 as a store owner, I want to let people out there know that uh, one of your stores was actually damaged pretty extensively by a fire a few months ago that I believe started in a bakery um, either next to your store or really close to your store. So we know you've been busy rebuilding and getting the store back up and running. I just wanted to ask how has everything been on that front and is everything okay? Yeah, we uh, we the, the the patty shop, the Jamaican patty shop next door, uh, went up in flames in the middle of the night, mm. and uh, we were affected. Um, we're, we have a temporary store in the same plaza. Um, it's next to like the pizza shop. For those that have come by, um, they probably see the fence that's up around the area. And then uh, the the plaza actually got sold to a developer, so now they're tearing down the whole plaza soon to build condos. So we're we're going to be there for uh, the foreseeable future. Actually, for the next about year, hopefully. Um, find a new location before then, but uh, but we're online. You know, we have a lot of our trading card stuff online, and then um, on our eBay, all these cards, we've got uh, all of our sports sports stuff up, and then we have our other location downtown um, in the the, right. the mall, two 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 Spadina. So, um, and you know, you could always send us a message or, or shoot us uh, a DM on Instagram if you guys have any questions. Yeah, but we 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 are still there um haven't haven't closed or anything but we will be looking for a new spot uh, hopefully in the next uh, couple months cool yeah good to hear that you guys are back up and running i know it's a pain going through insurance and i know you talked to that um you talked to us about that before so oh man yeah for for those out there that have uh, collectibles and uh you know uh make sure you guys insure it and or store it in a very safe place because this is something mm. you know we, we we always know that it could happen to us but we never think that it would happen to us. You know what I mean? It was, right, I was completely right. caught off guard and uh, I got hit pretty hard still, even with insurance. Um, but, you know, for anyone that has, you know, rare comics, cards, collectibles, any of that stuff, take a look and talk to your insurance company to see like where you can store it. It could be safer because the value of, of all of our cards and, 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 and collectibles have gone up significantly over the last couple of years. So it's it's you got to be really careful, you know. Something that might have been just sitting in your basement now is like a down payment on your next house. Like it's it's so crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah. So true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess really good advice. Those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really good advice. 
All right. Um, so I'm not sure I said this the last time you were a guest on the show, um, but for a lot of us who collected sports cards and trading cards as kids, you know, one of our dreams was to own our store, own store one day. And Will, you're you're definitely living that dream. Other than you know, um, uh, natural disasters have happening every once in a while, uh, but but we know um, we know that it's also a lot of hard work in running a uh, bricks and mortar store, especially during economic times where you know we're bordering a recession and we're battling high inflation. So um, just out of curiosity, how was business for you guys um, in 2022, just this past year? Um, the past year, it is, uh, it's still been okay for us, I would say. Um, okay. I, I've, been, I've been involved prior to the, the, the pandemic where everything kind of took off. So, you know, I have a, a good comparative perspective where mm. I think that um, things are still really good. You know, I think if you started in 2020 and 2021, 2022, it wasn't like, oh, like the sky is falling type of year. But right. overall, I think we were still in a really good place. Um, sealed products, sealed wax was still okay. Um, singles, yeah, they came down. But uh, if you were holding kind of uh, low serial numbered or like color uh, or more rare, high graded stuff, I think you mm. still sort of did okay uh, last year. I mean, it's only been the last three, four months where, you know, interest rates have really been going up and and I guess the, the, the economy in the U.S. and Canada have staggered a lot that it's become a little bit more evident that, uh, you know, car prices are coming down. But that's what's with everything, though. Real estate, you look at real estate, stock sure. market, crypto. Um, I mean, I think a good, good, I, I really don't know too, too much outside of maybe Pokemon. I know we were talking about Pokemon earlier. Uh, the right, trading right. cards have done very, very well, are still very strong. You know, Pokemon is demand for Pokemon is still huge, huge, huge. So we're one of those mm. hybrid stores that not only does sports, but we're really heavy on gaming. We do a lot of Pokemon Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. So okay. we, we've been fortunate on that end and, and kind of been surviving off that. Um, aside from that, you know, we've had that fire. We were closed for a couple months, which which kind of hurt us a lot. But I think we yeah. would have been otherwise if it wasn't for the fire. We still would have been okay. It still would have been a decent year for us. Um, but, uh, you know, 2023 is a tricky one, you know, the future, the mm. past is the past, the, the this mm. year coming up, I think is going to be interesting, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that was, um, going to be my next question. Um, you're definitely right. The past is the past. We're looking forward. We're in the new year right now. And is there anything you're hoping to see in the hobby this new year or even for yourself or your business, uh, anything you're hoping to do more of in 2023? Uh, yeah, I, I think, um, 2023, this next upcoming year, um, we're, we're, we're going to definitely do less, I think, baseball uh, and Panini, essentially tops and Panini. Mm -hmm. uh, being a store in Canada, um, these last few years um, have been really, really strong in those three three sports and, and, and same with, with cards in those three sports. But sure. um, the margin actually for those products have been, come down significantly. So not only have our, our costs gone up for the product, but the retail side has, uh, the product has, has just not shot up like has in the last you know few years. So if you look at Bowman Chrome, you look at um, some of the more recent releases like Bowman Draft, um, right. you know, some the, our margins are really, really healthy on those products, but they've, they've definitely come down a lot. Um, for basketball, this draft class hasn't been super strong, so... You're going to see, you know, National Treasures come out at a reasonable price. You know, whatever that may be, I don't know yet, but it's going to be reasonable. You know, I don't think it'll be pre-pandemic prices where they were like $800, $900 a box. Right. Um, our cost is higher than that now, um, but but you'll, 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 it'll be relatively affordable, um, in my opinion, compared to past years. Okay. But, um, you know, we're going to focus on hockey and, and the Leafs. Um, you know, I love the Blue Jays sure. still. Like, we're just going to focus on, on on kind of the hometown, you know, yeah. Leafs, Blue Jays, Raptors. We're very fortunate to have a lot of, lot of local, like, support for, for our teams. So, you know, we're yeah. going to shift a little bit to that. Um, we're probably going to do some some more, you know, because Fanatics is such a big player now in, in, in trading cards. We're probably going to end up doing more memorabilia with Fanatics. Um, we've always okay. done upper deck authenticated stuff, and we've done you know I mean, they've got Connor McDavid as an exclusive, um, right. but you know Fanatics has uh, um, Austin Matthews, so we're, we're probably right, gonna right. expand a little more into to um, uh, 
more um, memorabilia, especially with a new store. I think we'll have more space to do more more mem on the wall. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, uh, also with that gaming, yeah, also with gaming, we're going to be really strong with gaming. Continue with Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh and, and Magic. So, um, you yeah. know, for for anyone else out there that uh, that collects, I think that it's important <laughs> to diversify, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. bring just just bring in a couple cases of, you know, Bowman Chrome. You could you get rid of the tops, but you know Just for him. Reserve a couple. Well, it's it's yeah. Bowman draft is really, really strong. Like the list is actually really yeah, good. It's, like it's a good yeah. You know, yeah, so the like prospects it. in there are really strong, but like to give you kind of a general idea, like you know what the prices are on, on Bowman Chrome, it's very easy to find the retail prices right now, you know, you look on any website, right. but our margins are like in the single digits, maybe like wow. it's not, yeah, like, it's like the, down, the supers, wow. the super jumbos are a little bit, you know, the five auto boxes maybe a little bit better, but our allocation on that stuff is like it's cut to none. You know, I, right. I, mm. I, 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 it's very, very little. Um, and and then the regular jumbos, yeah, it's it, you can find. Is it, is them it on because the, it's the going website. to breakers? Like a lot of breakers are clearing them in cases and. You know, like they, they do like 10, 15, 20 cases of that at a time, just breaking it every single night, you know, at, at, at yeah. release. That's what that's what these breakers are starting to do. Right. So I, I don't know if that's the allocation or or, or what, but it's interesting. Um, they, they've always so breakers have always gotten a very healthy allocation, you know, whether they have a brick and mortar or don't have a brick and mortar. Um, they, they've always had very, very large allocations, especially the, the stores in the U S you know, I don't need right. to name who they are. You guys know who they are, you know, sure. and they yeah. would get tons and tons of Bowman Chrome. I mean, this is one of the flagship products of the year, right? So right. they would get a, a huge, huge allocation already. But the only difference now is that the cost of these products have gone up significantly. Yeah. So, mm. um, you know, you can see the, 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 the steep increase in kind of the the market price for these products. And now manufacturers and maybe some of the distributors are realizing like, Hey, look, you know, if, for, if, uh, if, if someone's willing to pay a thousand dollars for a super jumbo, why would we sell it for 300 bucks? You know, we should sell it for 900 or something, you know, and, and, yeah, sure. and the retailers are, are realizing like, well, you know, it's getting a little tougher. Yeah. But you know, and and it's it's their right to ch- to charge whatever they want. It's their products. Um, you know, uh, it is what it is. At the end of the day, if there's room for us, you know, there, there's room, and we just have to find different ways to survive because the demand for this product is just just like for these products were just way too crazy. Like, mm-hmm, you know, right. it's absolutely insane how how how, how crazy the uh, the demand for the Bowman Draft, Bowman Chrome, right. Bowman Baseball, all the Bowman products, and then for you know. Sure. Um, even basketball and football, like it was just, just crazy. So this is kind of one of the ways they're just like, okay, you know what? Let's let's see who can who can uh, still do it and, and and take product, which is it's it's tough. It's very very tough. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, speaking of allocation, speaking of mark, you know, distri- uh, distribution and and um, you know where it goes. Uh, you know, there's been con- some conspiracy, and you know, as a store owner, I, I was hoping that you could set the record straight that you know there are some cases, some boxes that are marked because um, there's some uh, breakers in the <laughs> states that that seem to get a ton of uh, big one of one hits. Um, have you heard that? And then you know, yeah. what, what, just I want to hear from a store owner what your thoughts are on that. Yes, I know. Trust me, I, I see it, I read it, I follow all the news. <laughs> um, you know, I think what it comes down to is um, the volume that you open. So mm, some of these guys sure. they open so much volume that in terms Tons, of probability, yeah. you're probably gonna get more of the high rarity items. Um, and they continue right. to open it even at the exorbitant prices. Like some of like, remember flawless, like I can't open flawless at that price. I don't have customers for that, right. but these guys were opening flawless every night. You know, it was on whatnot and wherever platform they were opening it on, they were still opening it. So I, I think at the end of the day, like these big carts are going to go to, to the guys that are opening more product, you know, like I, I've, I, yeah. I know huge, huge, like uh, upper deck, for example, I know a lot of the big, big cards that come out of, you know, 15, 16 cup, 16, 17 cup, you know, the Jersey numbers, things like that. Um, and they were just random collectors. It was, it wasn't, it Mm, wasn't, you know, a specific, um, big breaker by any means, you know, and, and, you know, the, the, I remember the day that, um, 
so the the logo man, not the logo man, the um, the shield, uh, mm-hmm. Austin Matthews shield. So I was a big Austin Matthews collector. Sixteen, seventeen was huge, huge year for me, and uh, I wanted to get the shield for Austin Matthews. And it was a store in Calgary that opened it. Yeah, and um, oh wow, okay. And, and I remember I got the message like I was in a movie actually in the middle of a movie. And I got, I got the call, and I was like, yo, uh, Austin Matthews logo man just got pulled. I, I stepped out of the movie. I was, like, making phone calls, trying to get the card. I was like, oh, how much? And then, and then they're like, oh, we're not going to know. The guy's not going to know until tomorrow. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't sleep. Like, as a collector, you, you got to understand. Like, it was like, I was, yeah, I, yeah, I was you know, I think, I don't know. I forgot what was in the movie. Maybe my, my girlfriend at the time. But, like, she's like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, I'm like, Relax, relax. You know, like <laughs> this is a card I have to have. You know, I have to have. But that's yeah, all right I there. I know. Who, I, I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> I still know who has the card. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. People are like crazy. Like, why would you? I, I just stepped out of the movie and and I was like, Please, like, oh, sell me the card. Collectors, sell me the card. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Collectors yeah. understand. So they understand. never sold it to you. <laughs> know, trust me. Yeah, you guys understand. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. It ended up getting graded. I think it's a 95, you know, somebody, it's mm. probably still in Alberta. I mean, I, I haven't heard that it moved, but you know, I know who kind of has it and when they want to move it, I'm sure they're going to, you know, make it public, but okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the shield, the, the Austin Matthews shield. Right. The, uh, yeah, the auto shield. Yeah, man. It's a pretty wish, sweet card. Wish, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I try to get it back then now. I don't I mean, the price is whatever, asking price, but yeah, I mean... The way I mean, the Leafs are playing pretty good. Austin Matthews is doing okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned uh, you know you can't afford to open cases of flawless, but you know we have our hometown Drake, so we'll do what we can to get him as your primary, you know, client, and then and <laughs> well, then you'll be back in business. I don't even know if he's still opening basketball cards. He's probably just on steak every night. No, isn't he just doing the no, game? Right, right. He's, he's, he's been at the casino, boys. I've, I've been seeing he's, his, he's a his de- roulette, yeah, he's a DJ, his roulette stuff, wins. Yeah. He ain't yeah, opening flawless doing, anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's not looking. Triple logo man's already been pulled, you know. So I don't, yeah, I don't really yeah. know if he's still searching for that. But that's actually <laughs> as as good as it is for the hobby. It's also not so good for the hobby. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, to have a celebrity like Drake chase after these like really crazy cards that are like so expensive and so inaccessible to the average individual. Sure, it's just like it's it's just it just dumps, you know fuel into like a huge fire already that's already been burning like crazy and then and it's like oh drake is chasing this car like yeah. nobody thinks about like you know what about all the other collecting that that happens True. And, 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 yeah. and and the kids and things like that you know like there's, there's so much to it even on the retail aspect like hobby shops i feel bad for a lot of hobby shops that are not going to survive you know like it's right yeah they opened up and then now they got to close i mean it's 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 kind of crazy these next few yeah. months we'll see how it goes but yeah, absolutely. Um, I only have one question, and like um, you mentioned about hobby shops, and and uh, it's a good segue to what I want to ask you because you're a store owner. I really want to get your thoughts on a uh, somewhat controversial take from Eric Whiteback, who is an influencer in uh, the hobby space. I'm, I'm not sure if you ever heard of him. He also goes by the handle the Collectibles Guru, oh, and man. yeah, and I'm, I'm going to quote him. But for context, he says. Um, or he thinks mom and pop hobby shops that seem to be straight out of the 90s need to go because they don't provide any value to the manufacturer, but yet they still expect them to get these 50% margins on high-end products like uh, he used Prism, for example. So this is what he says, quote, I want to see card shops and the card industry go the way of the sneaker industry, which is like beautiful retail storefronts, and those ones get some really high-end accounts and get the really, really great product that people line up for, then these other shops that are outdated in the middle of nowhere, like they should sort of be left to die, in my opinion. End quote. Jeez. Shots fired. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, do you agree, disagree, partially agree, partially disagree? I um, I, I I would partially agree because... I, sure. I think I think what 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 he's talking about is there's there's like I, I mean it, there's there are shops that have been around for a while that have allocations that are are grandfathered maybe not even grandfathered now but I mean they have been around for long enough where they're still getting some of these high end products but mm. they they um they expect to get a certain amount of product because they've been around for so long but 
the challenge is that there are a lot more newer hobby shops that are investing in kind of the brick and mortar and their 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 store and their marketing and and, and everything right so um and they want all this product so there's only a finite amount of product the problem with 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 his comparison to the sneaker industry though is i'm very very closely tied to the sneaker industry too i have a lot of good mm -hmm. friends that are there uh, that own stores that do both sneakers and cards is uh, hmm. shoes they'll just they'll just make more you know um if if you've right. got a pair of easies hey look we're just gonna print we're gonna manufacture more of these easies right there's no like yeah sure there's a 2011 retro of like this jordan but then 2023 comes around like we're just gonna like white cements are coming out again next year you know they came out with them several right. times you know but there's not gonna right, be right. another you know um mike trout rookie year you know and they're mm -hmm. not gonna be printing them again or they shouldn't be printing them again. <laughs> But they, they, right. you know, there's there's they're, there's only that one year, so it's it's a, it's a challenge, and it's, it's they're completely different industries. Um, you know, yeah. I, 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 of course, there are small stores that should be investing, you know, some of the money they've made into their their actual physical locations. But at the end of the day, it's really up to the collector, right? If, if the sure. collector is comfortable in in this type of setting. And they want to go back to these type of stores and and support them, then why why not, right? Because That's a good point. Yeah. At the end of the day, the consumer will 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 choose what where they want to shop and what they want to do. I mean, there are some shops that are in like I've been to to Winnipeg or um, Thunder Bay or some of the smaller towns, mm -hmm. and um, you know they haven't really changed anything and. I don't see why they would. I mean, they're the only store that's been around. Like, right, they've got right. the same customers that have been shopping for generations. And, um, you know, the, the, the people behind the counter, the owners are typically a little bit older. Um, and this is this is what they know. And this is how they've kind of just done business. And, and people support them. And I, I still buy cards from them, too. Sometimes I pop into shops and I just spend yeah. some money. It's not like I'm like, oh, I, I can't walk into this shop. Like, I understand his point of view. Like, you, you want to have a really nice store, really nice setup. You want to go to Yorkdale and see all those, like, really, really beautiful shops where people have spent, like, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars renovating. But I don't think it's really that feasible for uh, for a lot of the shops. I mean... Fair. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 yeah. a very very tough tough uh, topic to, to to kind of touch yeah. on, but you know, I, I there are like Tops is partnering with some stores, you know, and and creating you know new experiences for, sure, for yeah. consumers, and that's great. You know, um, I think naturally, you know, you're gonna see brick and mortar stores want to upgrade themselves and and do right. more for for uh, for the hobby and for the industry, but. Uh, it's also very expensive as a retailer. Like, you know, I, sure. I want to like do it, but um, a co like someone people can go to like Costco and buy Pokemon, and they can come buy a Pokemon from me. I can't compete with Costco, you know. So at the end of the day, like the amount that we invest in for a lot of like our, our interior decorations and, and tables and chairs, yeah, there's a certain point that we can invest into. But to say like, oh wow, we want to have like. A really really nice store and a really really nice location yeah it's really tough really really tough right yeah understood yeah. yeah i mean it's really like you said it's up to the customer i agree with you 100 yeah. percent. and you know like uh for the listeners out there i've been to dolly's it's clean don't make don't make will sound like it's not something otherwise than that like but i know i've been to other stores in the toronto area where they have been certainly around a while and it's um yeah it's a little bit dingy uh but you know like if if they have enough customers to support that it's it's their choice and i agree with that but uh, i'm probably yeah. one of the prime examples of that to be honest because we have like really really good support from the community we've been around for a long time and i've wanted to invest and really build out a really nice store but um I, during the, like we hit the pandemic and i ended up signing like one year leases every year and mm. and then we had the fire but um, you know, we were looking for locations, and and we really wanted to build something out. Build something out. Like young, you you just moved offices. Like your office is beautiful. Right. Like it's amazing, and, yeah. um, and he's even got a, a golf sim, man. Like you know, like it's it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. Do it. like, Sweet. It's state of the art, man. Like like when you were telling me like your your office, I'm like this is what I this is what I would want. You know, like this is absolutely right, right. crazy. 
but I'm sure you know the costs involved and, and everything for sure. going into it is not 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 light. And um, but and, and then we, we just didn't have enough product. Like you're going into the pandemic. I'm like, well, you know, let me build up this crazy sure. store with all this space for retail. And it's like right. I have like no product whatsoever. And yeah. um, you know, that's always a challenge. It's hard. But yeah, it's all about. I mean, that just comes with the territory, you know. Yep. No, I, I appreciate the, your perspective for sure. Yeah, I think there's like uh, there's needs for the mom and pop shop still though. Like uh, there's, I think what maybe the guy was saying, I, I forgot who who you quoted, but it's kind of like um, what was I saying? Um, m- like mom and pop shops uh, basically uh, are gonna need to pivot in in a way. Uh, that's what I'm. Think, I think he said it in a harsher way or maybe a, a sure. more blunt way that there's other ways that I guess uh, mom and pop shops are going to have to like find find ways to do it, right? So for instance, yeah. uh, submission and gradings have been a, a bigger process nowadays with a lot more people submitting or wanting to submit because, you know, there's that. So like I know there's a lot of independent grading companies that, do that but they don't really have a location and a lot of people aren't comfortable like just stopping in just random places so i feel like there's still needs uh for the servicing of customers in in that sense and i feel like you know just looking at it from a like a like a jewelry showroom type i don't think i think it defeats the whole purpose of kind of like card shops to be honest right but i get it if you're sell- selling you know individual high end slabs where you have potentially like maybe 90% of your business on ebay where you're closing auctions every day right where you can you know justify you know spending money on marketing and a showroom mm. where it generates enough revenue or marketing to get enough sales or whatever on ebay right so it's it's different ways in my opinion from just a business perspective the way i see it or if i was running a shop i would have to see it that way because i don't know the support i'm going to get from fanatics at the end of the day um and i think basing it on just that i i think there's a lot of uncertainty obviously and to make a heavy investment on just say a showroom or you know a a, a place where it's nice there has to be some you know, real purpose behind it. Right. And I think that's what the evolution of mom and pop shops are going to end up doing, to be honest, as technology increases, there's going to be more opportunities to make money. It's going to make more sense because the current situation might not entail for, you know, the margins to be there. So it's like, okay, why are we spending all this Mm. time on certain things? And we could go, you know, a different way. Right. And that's, Actually, what I love also about kind of like um, all this talk is because this is what innovation is. This is how, you know, dollies potentially could be the dollies of the future that, you know, you you don't know how that's going to look like. But, you know, that could be something that, you know, this is the process or transition to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Right. So I I think. Sure. You know, I I don't think it's all going back to like that, that pretty savage quote. (laughs) Um. I don't think it's all on like the mom and pop shops. You know, we talked about this before that for me that, you know, like Hyung and I were coming, you know, and Clark coming from like a marketing background, like Tops and Panini, they're lucky. Like they, they fell ass backwards into like this gigantic sports card boom that put mm-hmm. everybody on the map. Like prior to this, like there's no marketing happening, right? Like they weren't, I didn't really see a huge right. effort in, in Tops or Panini trying to grow the industry they're just trying to sell their products right so these mom and pop shops are you know dollies and and all of the hobby shops all over the world they're just left to fend for themselves based on allocation and boxes rather than tops trying to have a marketing strategy and and employ you know deploying like a hobby shop strategy like a retail shop strategy and like working with retailers and hobby shops to put up banners or whatever, or like provide them with some sort of incentive. Hey man, if you like grow your square footage to this amount, we'll make you like a diamond. There has to be an incentive for a mom and pop shop Mm, to want to make their shop look better rather than just completely on their own dime. And they're going to sell the exact same amount of product and they're going to get zero benefit from it. Right. Other than trying to make it look cool and marketing it themselves. Right. So I think a lot of it is on tops and pennies. If, if, if we're going to criticize somebody because we make fun of tops too. Like the first time they made a social media 
like commercial it was about those well, free giveaway and box cutters like what does that cost you guys i was like like that's your marketing play like come on so i don't know i, I put a lot of criticism yeah criticism good point. On the big boys yeah and good point I, i'm gonna jump in in all fairness they do provide uh some some dollars for for stores that's good to hear for brick and mortars okay they actually oh, have programs in place where mm-hmm. they, they do you know, subsidize uh, marketing. Uh, Opera Deck has been extremely. I know, yeah, extremely I know. Opera Deck good. does, uh, yeah, and, uh, okay, and, and fair, yeah, yeah. Tops has been okay, but they they are like, uh, I mean, in this eight years that I've been working with all three of these guys and everyone, they 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 each have always, even before the pandemic, tried to to encourage. And have different programs. You know, they all do like National Baseball Card Day. Hmm. Um, Panini has, you know, different Father's Day uh, programs. Upper Deck has the, the Hockey Card Day. And, and, and then they do try. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's very, very tough. I mean, Tim Hortons is one of the big, big, big things. I don't know if you remember, like 2015, 2016, when that program first got launched. Um, hmm. that, that was crazy for, for hockey cards. I mean, I think that's one of the, maybe one of the driving reasons that people started collecting hockey cards again because they could yeah. like, this was during like the Tim Hortons that's, that's, like, that's what brought me back actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, people would come to my store like almost every day and, and they're like, Oh, I bought this Tim Hortons pack. It was a dollar. Like now I want something else or like, I want to mm. buy some pages or top loaders or whatever. And then they yeah, actually cool. really, really, really um, kickstarted. Uh, well, I mean, McDavid helped too, but that it's one of those things that kickstarted like, um, sure. the, the hobby again, uh, especially with hockey cards, because if you think back like previous years before McDavid, like I, there weren't anything crazy. And, and I mean, the last sure. year it was, it was kind of like, yeah, it was like not too popular for four or five years at least. Um, but yeah, you know, and then since, since the McDavid year, it's been just insane, insane, insane. Yeah. Okay, I was just about to rail against the manufacturers, but since uh, we'll yeah. set the record straight, he, he um, he yeah. up, we're cool. Panini is tougher; it's a little bit tougher. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving yeah. some back, you know, some, some, some like uh, that's, behind that's the why scenes, we have you. That's scenes. why we have you as yeah. a guest. Yeah, there are pro- there, they do have programs, and, and like I said, like Upper Deck partnering with. That's Tim good Hortons, to know. You know what I mean, do you guys yeah. remember the Canadian Tire partnership? Mm, no. No, 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 no. What was it? That was insanely popular. So I think it started in 2018. If you guys look it up, you know, there's a, it's, it's, um, their Canadian Tire did a set because they're like, oh man, okay. Tim Hortons is like taking all these hockey cards and people are going to the store and buying coffee, you know, and, and, and buying these yeah. packs. So Canadian Tire, I think it was 2018, ended up uh, partnering with, with, uh, Upper Deck and creating mm-hmm. a set. Um, that no was sold exclusively at Canadian Tire, and people went crazy the first year. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. And it was mostly okay. uh, um, Team Canada, Team Canada stuff, right? And just I think really, really, really popular. Now that you mentioned Team yeah. Canada, I'm not sure why. Like my wife, uh, my wife works at Canadian Tire. She still does, and uh, that's yeah, how much she hated cards. Like, no, cards. yeah, he doesn't need. <laughs> she knew it the whole time. She yeah. knew it the whole time. She's like, yeah. I cannot yeah. say anything. She's, it's probably all in the garage, man. Clark, it's in the garage, man. <laughs> she's, she, she's secretly she been holding the boxes. She, she, she left gosh. it in the office before the pandemic. Mm. Yeah, it's just like it's under her office desk. She hasn't been back since the pandemic. So, <laughs> oh wow, yeah, they, they they've done it a few times afterwards. Her. Afterwards, I, I think maybe the, the year like twenty twenty, maybe they did it again, or twenty twenty nineteen, they did it again. But I don't recall anything recently. Huh. But but the okay. first year was extremely popular. I mean, I remember the first year, like, yeah. even when I met Skinny Tire, I was like, yo, where are the cards? Where are the cards? And like, oh, somebody <laughs> came and bought all of them, you know? It was, it was crazy the mm. first year, yeah. No, yeah. that's uh, no. We appreciate that insight, and um, you know that's why that's why we love having you on. Um, uh, we'll we'll have uh, Will back on as a as a regular guest. We always uh, appreciate when he reaches out to us, and uh, we love connecting with him. And you know, I think the last time I saw you, Will, in person was when you actually went to Hyung's office and, and checked checked it out there. So that was good to see you then. And um, uh, we always appreciate you being a friend to us in the hobby. And of course, um, we thank you for being on the pod again. And I'm sure we'll be keeping in touch with you um, throughout the year. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys, a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Go, go support local, guys. Go support local. Do it. <laughs>
Uh, one more time, we'd like to thank William uh, for coming back onto our pod. We always um, are glad to have him as a guest, and he always brings a wealth of information, especially from his perspective as a store owner. Uh, we got lots to learn, you know. Um, uh, like I said in, 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 in the interview, um, I thought Tops, to John's point, I thought Tops and Panini did nothing, but apparently they help uh, local card shop owners um, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So I'll, I'll uh, hold off on the criticism there. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be sure to have Will back in a future episode uh, this year. Okay, uh, with that, let's go on to our last segment of this show, and it's our weekly segment we call Pick One. And if you're joining us for the first time, this is when each of us will put up two cards and then we debate which one we would rather invest in. And as usual, I'll ask Kyung to start things off. All right. Um, so over the past uh, week, I've been kind of just shopping around and looking looking at like active war leaders and seeing based okay. on their age and kind of like uh, how many at-bats they've had and the ratio of kind of like where they are sitting in terms of their Hall of Fame trajectory – and obviously, a couple guys like Goldie, Mookie, you know, um, mm-hmm. Arenado, they they really stand out in terms of value, in my opinion. And I was looking, especially at the uh, Arenado. I just think his his Bowman Chrome is so criminally low. Same with Paul Goldie, you know, uh, even Mookie Betts. At at some point, obviously, Mookie's a little more hyped um, because he has a little more of that desire. But I went into more alternative cards that I think. Um, I personally really like um, as a baseball collector is the Topps Heritage real one autographs, whether it's red ink or just the real one, especially in the yeah. older, like kind of like mid 2014, 15, 13. The pop counts are really low uh, in general uh, with paper and PSA 10s. And there's two um, and the red ink actually like the Machado red inks were out of 10. So there's a huge wow. demand for kind of yeah. like uh, these re- these red inks, and they increased the kind of print run uh, on the red inks to like 67 and and whatnot. Um, you know, in in more modern sets. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna match up two kind of like um, cards that I want you guys to see your opinion on. Which one would you pick? Not as a value, like in terms of what's the better buy right now, more of a which card would you rather have, period. Whether it's for long-term investment, uh, not really short-term flip, more of a based on the card, this is something. Because we're talking about um, potential Hall of Famers that are on sure. a- amazing trajectories. Mookie Betts, his real, his real one auto, which is from 2014 Topps Heritage, uh, PSA 10. Um, there's a pop of uh, actually 10 on Mookie, and it's basically the last sold was 1500. So we'll say for 1500, because yeah. and then the the other one I'm matching it with is Arenado, Nolan Arenado's real one. And the reason why I brought this up is is a pop two, right? So there's only two in the world, uh, graded PSA 10, and there's one that's listed for 2690. Obviously, somebody has to buy it. For that to make the last comp, we probably won't see a comp on that because I don't think anybody's going to purchase it at that price. But it is a lower pop, right? So we're, are you going to go with the the Aaron Auto Real One Auto PSA 10 or a Mookie Betts with a higher pop? Let's just say at 1500 Both were 1500 bucks. Which card are you going with? Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm a, I personally, I'm an Arenado fan. Uh, I like him a lot. I, I did have his rookie card at one point, but I sold it. Um, I did see a gold refractor um, tops update that sold recently. I was very tempted. I was like, oh man, that's such an awesome card. And I, I think that was the first time I saw the PSA 10 ever listed since I got back into this on eBay. So I was like, I think it's like a pop 10 or 11. Um, this is tough. Uh, I, I think I have to go with Mookie though, as much as I like Arenado, um, they're both going to, they're, if not already, if they were to both retire today, I, I would assume they're going to make it into the hall. Uh, so they're well on their way. I feel like Mookie will, f- will f- finish his career as one of the best baseball players of all time. Like he'll be in sort of like a top 20. Uh, Young, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like he's going to 
conversations for Mookie at the end of his career will be something like that. Uh, Nolan Arenado, on the other hand, he'll get great accolades, but he'll he'll you know he'll be like a standard, really solid Hall of Fame finish. And pop ten, that is minuscule enough. I know pop pop two is like. I think that's just too minuscule. I think like unless you're like a hardcore <laughs> Aeronauta fan, you won't even know that like card exists in a PSA ten. But the 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 Mookie, I think ten is minuscule enough. And I, I yeah, he he's the bigger player of the two. So it, for me, uh, I think in a coin flip situation, I think Mookie's the one. Mm, right. Okay. Well, that's hilarious. Uh, there's something that's like too minuscule. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the super fractor the, yeah, the I, too I, minuscule I'm out, I don't I'm like out it. on the one yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, well that's sad I mean I guess it's it's um, it's, it's just, the pop count is because it's determined by the grade so there's more of them out there I'm sure if you look at PSA 9s there's probably a few more yeah. but um, anyway I don't know what I'm talking about with the minuscule thing <laughs> no no I'm just kidding <laughs> um, I I I'm going to also go with Mookie just because um, I don't think there's enough love for both players, but I think um, I don't know what Nolan Arenado has to do to really uh, get noticed by more people. Like what he's doing is amazing and he Mm -hmm. just does it very quietly. He's one of those guys that produces quietly, you know, and, and um, you know, he's, he's not loud in any way, usually, you know, um, and, and Mookie's more of a vibrant player. Like he um, shows more emotion on his sleeve um, whenever he plays, whenever he does something amazing. Big market and, um, teams. He ru- big market teams with the Dodgers right now, right? So, I mean, he runs. I think I like that aspect of his game as well, you know, so he could be um, probably a little bit more well-rounded than Nolan Arenado in that sense. And I think um, if I'm looking more long-term, um, I think Betts has more potential to to increase in value, um, in my opinion, because of all those reasons. Nice. So just just to kind of put it out there, Mookie Betts, uh, in terms of active players for WAR, he's in enter. He's nine seasons in. He's twenty nine years old with a fifty six point four WAR mm-hmm. in five thousand sixty four played appearances. Nolan Arenado is ninth, so Mookie's eighth in active, uh, current active MLB players. Uh, uh, So Nolan Arenado has 10 seasons instead of nine compared to nine, and he's 31 versus 29, so only Mm -hmm. two years older with the 52.2 war and in 5,800 plate appearances. So so basically these guys are both, obviously Mookie's a a tiny bit ahead of Nolan Arenado in terms of kind of like where he's going to be. But I feel in this case, for me, um, Mookie's obviously uh, the better player in my opinion in terms of all that jazz. But I think if I'm going to buy a Mookie, it's not going to be a Heritage. Mm. Although I do like the Mookie Heritage, um, I think with Mookie, because I like him as a player, uh, and there's no value in the Bowman Chrome and the Arenado, I rather go with a lower pop Arenado that's impossible sure. to get for that PC and then kind of shop kind of for that, um, like the Bowman Chrome, maybe um, Mookie Betts, right? right? So that's it's, fair. yeah, it, it, it's kind of like, I, I do agree with you guys though, in terms of like, I would normally, if it was just a flip or something, you're probably going to be more successful with the Mookie Betts. But there's something about that Arenado card that pop too. Um, you know, and it, it's such a good looking card. Same with the Mookie cards, amazing looking too. They're both on card autos, but yeah, I think uh, I uh, I would go Arenado in this case just because what I've learned to do, or at least my always goal for everything is if I have access to a big card, and I'm doing this with obviously the Tatis Independence uh, Day. You know, is literally mm-hmm. there's uh, there was a pop three. A PSA 10 for the Tatis ID and I I snagged another one just this past weekend uh, for a really really good price so I have two out of the three and I would love to get the third one mm. and I think that's cool to really corner <laughs> yeah. the market in that case and I would do the same thing as think of a Hall of Famer you you have a piece of a huge card of a Hall of Famer that you have you know the whole pop there's only one that exists right it's not uh, like it's yeah. a prospect or anything Whereas the Mookie, you know, you're probably going to have to, you know, find a, a decent Bowman Chrome 
for that. So I'm going to go Arenado in this play- case just to be the, the the guy on the other side. And because I'm looking more of a long-term play with low pop cards where I'm going to enjoy my collection more than just selling it. I'm not playing. I don't want to sell, right? I don't want to sell anymore or at least flip unless it's like, okay, you're stupid not to, right? So right, right. I'm looking more long-term in this market, at least for now. So yeah. I, I like to, I think the Mookie's just easier to attain that Arenado once that if I bought that one I'm going for the other I'm 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 searching for the other <laughs> right. market interesting getting the, no I I totally hear what you're saying yeah and you know the one thing I don't like about the Mookie Betts Heritage card is like you can't really see his auto that yeah well. it blends into mm. the red jersey yeah. yeah so like sometimes I I look on eBay because I've been looking for to to snag one of his um Mookie Betts uh, Heritage card and. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, this is such a good deal. And then it's like, you oh, it's the non-auto. It's, it's the not, non-auto. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, where the Arenado, you could clearly see it on his white uniform. So I, I yeah. do like the look of the Arenado card better. But I, 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 I totally hear where you're coming from, though. Good one, John. Nice. Okay. So my 1v1, uh, similar to last week, I, I said $1,500. Uh, we're gonna bump it up to. <clears throat> it just so happens I I, I compare two sides with sixteen hundred, so twenty twelve Panini Prism Kyrie Irving PSA ten silver which they called Prism back in the day so uh, Prism silver PSA ten Kyrie Irving last sold for sixteen hundred just just under sixteen hundred versus uh, a twenty fifteen Devin Booker PSA ten Prism silver which goes for around eleven. 1100 ish and a donovan mitchell prism silver psa 10 which goes for around 450 so about about 1600 on each side which are you going to pick are you going to pick booker and mitchell or the Kyrie? do you have sorry do you have pop counts yeah uh donovan mitchell is 577 devin booker is 199 Kyrie is 26 Mm. Mm. I feel like I know what uh, Hyung's going to go for after the Arenado mm. speech. <laughs> he's going to go for the Kyrie and then he's going to look for the other 25. <laughs> you know me. You know me. You can go first. I won't ruin the surprise. Right, right. um, I, honestly, I was leaning towards Booker and Mitchell, like especially with Mitchell balling at like he scores 71 points booker i think is still undervalued just because he's injured i think still and i think it's a good buying opportunity but um and you know Kyrie is Kyrie. You know, like i um i'm always worried about Kyrie's off the court antics like it could he, like he could come and go right now he's balling out too like he's playing like he's on the highlight reels i love how he when he plays basketball he's like there's Amazing. no comparison to just um how he can handle the ball right so but um the twenty six pop count is just too juicy. I think <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's because Hyung just talked about Arenado with the two pop count, but um, um, and that. and it's silver, um, you know, and 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 I think at least now uh, with the silver, if we're talking more more long term flip, I think Kyrie's done enough to um, to be you know in the hall and just to like you know just to have uh, recognition after he's done playing basketball. So I'm going Kyrie in this case. Um, I I mean, originally I liked I liked the the two plays the Donovan Mitchell Devin Booker until I heard the pop count to be honest and I had a feeling I had a feel I just didn't know it was that big like pop twenty six for me is pretty low, um because technically if let's just say they were all pop the same pop counts you know Devin Booker Donovan Mitchell are very you know similar type like uh all stars as like a Kyrie. So for me, just hold those two and you'd get two of them eventually the prices would go up. But I don't think the prices are going to move with that much of a pop count in the short term. So that's my concern is um I think it's going to sit sideways for a really long time. So like for me, it's it's all about that opportunity of will that Kyrie be available because then I would be on the hunt for the next 25 of them. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of like, uh, you know, my train of thinking where it's just, it's just way harder to, you know, get, get that Kyrie. Right. Whereas the Mitchell, you could literally, you know, 
find anywhere you know 500 pop 574 there's going to be one for sale at every corner of the street yeah Kyrie, Kyrie, yeah yeah so i purposely picked players that uh, have come down quite a bit and were not so likable or they were uh <clears throat> less of a hobby darling in recent in recent months or years um yeah, so these aren't popular players. These aren't uh, hobby darlings in any way, but I'm going to agree with you guys. I I did like the Booker and Mitchell, but that pop count is too juicy. And, and really, for me, what it comes down to, in each three of these guys, for one reason and another, uh, their values are very low, right? I think Donovan Mitchell, I don't think people believed, other than literally the 70-point game that he just blasted off on, I don't think people really believe that in Utah, like his value took a huge hit because they're like, you know what? He's he's a good player. We're not going to win any MVPs. Clearly not going to win any championships. So turned into kind of like a vanilla superstar. And then Booker really shot himself in the foot by kind of like pretending like he's Mamba and then, and then, and then losing and, and, <laughs> and really, you know, you know, becoming unlikable out of nowhere. He was like, like a darling and, be, and overnight he became like a villain uh, and then Kyrie, obviously him too. Like he, he just for one reason or another, maybe self-inflicted, but he came with a lot of drama. So of the three, I mean, for me, it just comes down to skill. Like if if these three guys are balling out, put all of that aside, the negativity and uh, the the vil, you know, one guy being a villain and one guy having drama. If you put that all aside, just straight skill and basketball. It's unfortunate, but Ky- I mean, Ky- this guy's gonna. For me, he if drama aside, he should have easily, and maybe he still will, but finish like top 30, top 20 NBA all time. Like that's the kind of ridiculous skill Kyrie has. So it just comes down to skill and then add that skill with the pop count. It There's still juicy potential. As much as you can hate on Kyrie, like if he's just straight playing basketball and maybe they win a championship this year, who knows? Um, yeah, this that could be a, a really big buy at, at 1600 bucks. Yeah, agreed. So it's a Kyrie sweep. I'm just looking at this graph. So one sold for twelve thousand April twenty twenty one. That's crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that's a perfect candidate for my IG reels. Um, where it's just like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, was, I was just scrolling through uh, Instagram right now. I seen the LeBron one, and then I always love reading the comments because people think it's so negative. It's like, whoa, like stop, man. This is all factual information. It's just, that's it's important just data. for buying it's opportunities. Just, exactly, it's just data, guys. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll wrap up the show with my one v one. This is a, a lot of moving parts here, so I'll just say it, and then I'll kind of kind of provide some context. So on one side, we got Jackson Churio. I know, um, uh, Hyung, you just picked one up. Uh, looked like a Big nice red him. ice um, refractor. Uh, but his 2022 Bowman Chrome um, Prospect Autograph Refractor, number to 499, uh, PSA 10, versus J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez, his 2019 Bowman Chrome for, um, Prospect uh, or Rookie Auto, uh, but graded BGS 9, mint condition, both of them go for about a thousand dollars, give or take a hundred. So, the J Rod yeah. is a is refractor it, too. Is a refractor no. a base? It's, it's a, a base. base. Auto BGS nine mint, but it's J Rod. And on the other side, you got Jackson Churio, 18, 19 year old kid, um, but it's a refractor number to four ninety nine PSA ten. Um, oh. th- this th- th- for me, this one's easy, but like. Uh, John, I don't want to sway your decision, but I'll I'll go anyways. Um, yeah, I need I need uh, you to sway my decision. <laughs> okay, so so basically, here is the way I see it. You know, um, Julio already had his love, mm-hmm. so we're talking BGS nine now of a base auto, right? So at the peak, at the hype, Julio played balled out, was an all star this year. What what did a PSA ten base go for? A PSA ten base. I would say 3,000, 4,000 maybe at the peak. Okay. I'll so check, yeah. so my my thing is um how, can, how how what does Julio have to do in order for him to sustain that price, right? Yeah. And a BGS9 base to move the needle that much. How much can it go up? Can it go back to the PSA 10 value that it was before for the BGS to like 
move the needle a bit. Whereas I feel like the Jackson Churio refractor PSA 10, if the, for, for comparables, Jackson Churio would be kind of like in the same boat as an Acuna type prospect, right? So for me, it would be like, can that refractor hit that 4 5K at that hype, right? And with, a, with it being a PSA 10, I think it can, right? If, if Jackson Churio becomes kind of like what he's supposed to become or his trajectory that he's, he's going on right now with the 18 year old being in double A and even Milwaukee potentially saying he might get called up in 2023 as a 19 year old, that would be insane if he starts off in double A. Right. Mm -hmm. But obviously there's a lot more risk to it, but I'm just saying that PSA 10 refractor looks really good because that car could potentially be $5,000 at his peak. At Churio's peak, if he ends up tearing it up, it could right. get to that price. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. So I so, picked the Churio. Yeah. I thought so, but yeah. Good. good yeah. <laughs> I, I felt that too. <clears throat> I was already leaning towards Churio and, um, you know, full, full disclosure obviously i know nothing about the kid i've never watched him swing <laughs> i know i know absolutely nothing other than the fact that he's a chase card uh in bowman chrome and mm. um i lean on somebody like young this guy you know young he knows baseball he knows prospect baseball really well he's a he's a part of the game and if somebody like young is spending money on cheerio it gives me confidence that this could be a a pretty good roll roll the dice and J Rod for me. I have FOMO. Yeah, out of FOMO too. <laughs> but a little bit of both. I, I, I'm, I'm FOMOing. That's why. Cause yeah. I think he's too good, but it's, it's a bit of FOMO. Just warning you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which I'm still fine with. <laughs> um, I mean, l let's be honest. Both of these car, these guys, these players are are still pretty hyped right now. Like there, there is a spike yeah. on both of them, and they're both mm -hmm. due to have True. correction. So either way, I think both of these picks will have some correction. But um, of the two, if you really wanted to roll, and for me, PSA ten refractor numbered, and then I have a good friend that is feeling pretty confident putting some money into it. <laughs> like that, that's an easy even. A investor and collector hats put together, it's easy for me. Like base auto, BGS9, you know, I probably won't even have, like, I, I probably want to get rid of that card as soon as possible while I, while, while it's in my collection, right? So <laughs> um, I think I'd probably have a little bit more fun with the PSA 10 refractor. So, yep. All right. Fair, fair points. Um, I think it really comes down to, like, what's your um, risk appetite? Yeah. Right? Um, and I think, I don't know, I'm going to go with J-Rod. I think he's pretty much a sure bet in terms of what he did in his rookie year. I have pretty high confidence that he could do something very similar in a sophomore season. Um, I think he's a real deal. And, um, you know, even with the BGS 9, even with the base auto, uh, you know, like if I'm thinking uh, more uh, mid to long term, I'm, I'm definitely... Um, more bullish on J-Rod, you know, even after seeing him the first year. So I think it's your risk appetite because I, I you know, the gambler in me um, would definitely choose Jackson because there's a PSA 10 factor. There's the numbered factor, 499. Um, and the shiny, it's a refractor, right? So, um, but, you know, the, the other side of me is like, sure, it could definitely hit 5K for sure. I have no doubt. It could also hit 500 you know, if, yeah. if Jackson doesn't do what he's supposed to do. And, you know, a lot can happen with 18-year-old kids. Um, not every 18-year-old high top prospect um, um, baseball player in the minors makes it. It's just, it's just a numbers game, really. You know, you look at this stat. So it's your risk appetite. You know, Jackson certainly has talent. That's why there's a good reason why he's a chase card. But um, if I'm comparing it to J-Rod, um, who I'm just, yeah, just really more confident and I love watching him play. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player in years to come. I'm just investing in the player more so than, than anything else. So mm. um, I'm going to go stay with uh, J-Rod. I, I need to add a J-Rod to my collection. That's one of my goals for, <laughs> for 2023. Um, when, I'm going to wait till he gets in a slump. Hopefully it's just like a minor slump and then I'll just scoop one up. <laughs> All right, uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, end the show. Thanks to all our listeners once again. Um, as always, for tuning in every Tuesday, uh, we do have an episode every other Friday, so we'll uh, see you then as well. Um, till then, bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. 
We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5 Card Guys, or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards, or John at Trade You at Recess. You can also check us out at 5CardGuys.com. Thanks again, and hope to connect soon.